if you can put a couple words together and get your point across and I can put a couple words together and get my point across. Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? My name's Maddie, if you've never been here before and if you are a returning subscriber, you know, hello, how's it going? So today I'm gonna be talking a little bit about learning another language. And so I've been in France for almost three years now and I've been teaching English in two French middle schools for almost two years. So I feel like just between my experience doing that and then also being a French learner myself i feel like i've just like picked up on a lot of tips and i have a lot of thoughts about learning languages um, so i just wanted to kind of throw my hat in the ring because i think that learning another language is super important for me it's quite um humbling being here and trying to learn french and i just think that it's such an amazing feeling when you can start to communicate in a second or maybe a third language it's the way that we can broaden our horizons, you know, la la la. Watching so many students trying to learn, it's just really made me think about language learning a lot. I don't know, it's really a topic that I'm passionate about. So without further ado, we're gonna talk about, I think like five points, give or take. We'll see how this is organized. I don't want this to be too long, so let's get into it. So the first tip that I have, or the first kind of observation I have about language learning is that if you wanna to get to a good level, it's not gonna be in a classroom. And if you're taking a class right now, you're majoring, you're minoring in a language, don't take that as you shouldn't learn it in a classroom. I think that there's a lot of benefits to having kind of a more, like to having a structured um, lesson plan. And I do think, yeah, there's a lot of positives to it, but if you wanna to get to a fluent kind of level, you're not gonna learn it in a classroom. The kids who I have, who they all take the same class, they're, you know, same curriculum, but the ones who really thrive and the ones who are really great are, they did not learn in the classroom. They're doing work outside of the classroom. And it's not just like grammar. They don't have a textbook. They're watching Netflix, watching YouTube videos. They're doing other things in English. And it's almost like, it's not a form of study. It's more just like for their own enjoyment which kind of leads me into my second point, which is if you wanna get really good at a language is you need to be kind of ingesting things every single day. It needs to be a practice that you really commit to and you can do like small changes in your life, like um, listen to a podcast when you're on your walk, you can start reading books in a different language or in the language you wanna learn. You can look at social media in that language, you can watch a YouTube, there are so many different levels and time commitments that you can use just to give yourself that daily dose of language. One kid, I asked him how he had learned English so well, and he said that he just watches YouTube videos. So you can take that same principle and apply it to any language, any language that you want to learn. You need to be ingesting it. You need to be listening to different speakers, which kind of leads me into my next point, which is that if you want to gain fluency in a language, you need to be listening and learning from native speakers. That means the person that they like have grown up with the language, not just grammar wise, but they know like the cultural slang. They know, they just like, they know, they have like the natural way that people speak because I think that's one of the biggest issues kind of going back to my first point. The way that I learned French in university that's because I got a minor in French. I can't remember if I already said that, but the things that I learned and like the way that I learned how to speak is just not how people talk at all. And it was such a shock for me when I came here and you really have to adapt yourself. So I watched some French YouTube channels. For example, whenever I watch like Lena Situation, I have to ask my boyfriend so many questions because she uses a lot of slang and she like, she, you know, she talks in a very normal way. Um, she also talks really fast. So sometimes it's hard for me to understand, but I think just like having that little bit of like slang, listening to how people really talk and paying attention to the pronunciation, that's a great way to learn. If you want to gain fluency, you need to be listening to native speakers. And like I said, that can be from your like subscriptions, Netflix, they probably have your language. If not, YouTube is probably an even better. And then if not, if you want to take it a step further, if you don't have a native speaker around you, 
if you can't find like a German club, a Spanish club, like you could get on a service like Preply or some other like language learning service and start paying for lessons. And of course, I mean, obviously to speak with a native, I mean, the most extreme example of this would be literally to go to that country and try to learn that language. But that's just, I feel like that's kind of unrealistic for a lot of people. But like, if you had that opportunity, that's obviously an amazing way to learn just being surrounded by people speaking the language all the time. That's an, so that's like another thing that I've like really benefited from is whenever I'm in like the, what's it called? The like the professor, the teacher's lounge. That's what, whenever I'm in like the teacher's lounge and people are having conversations, I try to be like an active listener, which I'm just eavesdropping on them, but whatever. And I really try to listen to like how they're responding to certain questions. What does it sound like? all these things. Okay, so my number four kind of tip and insight is that to like be well-rounded and learning whatever language you wanna learn. You know, there's listening, there's reading, there's writing, and then there's speaking. And speaking is probably gonna be the most difficult part of it. I mean, that's definitely, for me, like I feel like I can understand really well, I read really well. It's like speaking is just so hard. And even if you think you have a handle on it, it's really difficult. I mean, this could also just be for me, but I, I personally think that speaking is the hardest part. I think that if you talk to anyone else who has learned like a second or a third, you know, language, I hear a lot like, oh, I can understand really, really well, but I just can't speak. So, and I think it's just because like, you just need to get used to like, forming the sounds and it's just like a, it's a completely different thing for your brain to get used to so i definitely think speaking is probably going to be the most difficult part but that's why practicing is one of the most important things to do that's kind of my it's not really like a tip but it's just kind of an insight that i have i suppose and my last kind of tip or insight that i have about learning another language is and this is i feel like one of my biggest insights about obviously just like working with kids and because one of my like basically my main job is to make conversation with them and for them to practice speaking kind of like i said speaking is super hard and it's it can be like embarrassing you feel super stressed i know that i feel stressed but that's why like my number like my i think this is my fifth i don't know don't be too hard on yourself and like cut yourself some slack learning languages I mean, as an adult or as a kid, like if it's not something that's spoken at home, it's super hard to learn another language. And I feel like you can't be afraid to make a mistake. And I need to like take my own advice about this, but I teach kids English in French schools. I also tutor on Cambly, an online service. And I hear people constantly saying like, oh, like I'm I'm not good. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so bad. Like my accent. Whenever you hear someone speaking, I'm not judging them. We're just communicating. If you can put a couple words together and get your point across and I can put a couple words together and get my point across, that's all it is. Like that's all communication is about. So like this idea of like perfect, being perfect, driving perfect grammar. Like, of course, I think that it's, it's great to express your thoughts more more better more fluently just don't worry i says i say this to the kids all the time like don't worry just like try make mistakes and it's just crazy how many times people say oh like i'm so bad i i i can't and it's i'm like no it, you're great like i i don't it's crazy how we all i think we all get in our minds and we we just are really hard on ourselves and so like, don't be hard on yourself quand je parle en français avec quelqu'un qui est français ou, ou française toujours je dis oh je suis désolé mais je parle pas très bien français et je sais très bien que mon accent c'est pas euh, meilleur je sais pas pourquoi je fais ça tu vois toujours la euh, personne ou la personne qui est français française ils disent euh, non 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 c'est pas grave euh, c'est super ça like tu parles très bien français people are really nice with me and i think people just really appreciate you trying to connect in another language so yeah i just wanted to give you a few quick notes about language learning and my observations from my time as an english teacher here i think like of course i teach english because that's like my expertise because i'm I, I like grew up speaking English, obviously from the United States, but I think like learning any language, like I place equal importance on trying to learn any language like Arabic, Spanish, French, Chinese, Japanese, any, I mean, any language in the world. I think if you can learn something else, I think it's really 
spectacular, like I said. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up because I don't wanna, I keep saying it, don't wanna be too long. I tend to ramble, I'm not trying to do that. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about learning French, about France, about language learning, about myself, about my channel, about food, about this, comment down below and let me know or follow me on TikTok or Instagram, I don't know. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Toodles.